Welcome to the second part of this video series on simulation-driven design for industrial automation. In the previous section, we looked at how we could start to model our, our physical systems using design tools like Simscape, doing kinematic and dynamic analysis, and also do actuator sizing and study dynamic effects on the system. In this section, we'll move on to adding closed loop simulation with supervisory control. So we'll look at how we can model the supervisory control, for example, to control the system, but also to detect, for example, faults or mechanical failures of the system and how to detect and handle those. Now we will look at how we can design our supervisory logic by reusing the models of the physical system from the previous section. So what we can do is we can design our controller, start to build that in a system model together with the existing model of the system and thus do closed loop simulation without having access to the hardware or the physical components. We will also look at how we can, as a next step, model faults in our physical model. And that way that allows us to build and verify our control design against this model where we can introduce those faults that might otherwise be, be dangerous or, or really harder to use or expensive when it comes to using real hardware. Using a system model in Simulink, we can now directly interact with the model as in, and it's, as it's a closed loop simulation, we can see the behavior of the model and the control system together. So we can interact with either using recorded data, but also interactively as in this example, using controls directly in the model where we set the, the signals to the actuator and then can study the result of the physical system as we tune those. We will now look in more detail on how we can model the supervisory controller based on models of injected faults. So if you look at the model from the previous section with the mechanic, the hydraulic, electrical engines, for the electrical motor and gear, punching and lifting, we have now modeled in ad an additional alternative, a variant in the model that introduces a fault. So we have a spring that we can set the spring constant to a very low value to model, model a mechanical failure. We have also modeled a fault detection algorithm. So this is something that we typically run in the actuator controller and it simply flags, it detects the, the current monitors the current and, and flags that to the supervisory controller. The supervisory controller, on the other hand, is then modeled using simulink blocks to capture both signal flows but also state machines, like in this state flow chart here. So, this is where we take handle the safety logic, and on the left hand side, we monitor different signals coming in to detect, detect issues. We, for example, we detect range violations, etc. We also keep track of this flag signal. So if we now simulate the model, we can see on the right hand side, you see the position and, and signal from, from the plant, as well as the signal that goes into the supervisory controller. And the bottom left state is monitoring this signal and we can see that in the middle how we how we how we act to to, to break the crane while an error is reported we have now seen one example of how we can use system level models and simulation to develop better control strategies and to validate and tune those way before hardware is available. In the next section, we will look at how we can generate control production code from those models and also validate them using real-time testing.